Suppose we have a container represented by this box and it has two different gases in it, one of which we're ma making as shaded circles, the other one is the unshaded circles. And they're together in this box as a mixture, they are ideal gases, and we want to talk about the pressure of one component or another component or the total pressure. It turns out that we can write the pressure of one component and we'll represent the shaded circles as one component. So the pressure of the shaded circles, let's say in this case it's just the count, there's three of them, so the pressure is three somethings, and for the sake of argument we'll say it's tor, which is a unit of pressure. In that particular system we can say the pressure of the unshaded circles would then have to be five, because there are five of them. And thus, the total pressure, represented by PT, is the count of all of them together, which is simply the sum. So it would be 8 tor. Now this is an example of a law that we call Dalton's Law. And so in this box I'm going to make Dalton's Law. And it's simply written that the total pressure, P sub T, is equal to the pressure of component 1, plus the pressure of component 2, plus the pressure of any subsequent components there may be. And that is known as Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. It simply means that if gases behave ideally, you can add their partial pressures to get total pressure in a container. Now notice in this container, Obviously the two gases are in the same volume, so V would be the same in the ideal gas law. And they're also, since they're in the same container, they must be at the same temperature, so T would be the same. And we also know that R, the universal gas constant, is always the same, because it is a constant. So we can say for these two components, R, T, and V are all the same. for all the components that are in a mixture together. All right, and this allows us to write some interesting things with the ideal gas law and create another equation that we will use. All right, so let's look at a particular component, like the pressure of the shaded uh, gas. And so we can say PV equals NRT where the N would be the number of moles of the shaded species. We can say a similar thing for the unshaded or any other component we may have. The ideal gas law is obeyed for every component, PV equals NRT. And we can thus say it also for the total pressure, P sub T equals N total, um, PV equals NRT. All right, let's take this one for the total pressure and rewrite it with all the stuff without subscripts together. So we'll move N over to the other side. PT over NT equals RT over V. All right, and we can write the other two with the same thing, with the non-subscripted parts all together. Although I'm not gonna move the N. All right, but what you notice here is that if RT over V is equal to PT over NT, then that will be true for all components because they have the same values of R, T, and V. So I can substitute that expression in for RT over V here and for RT over V here. I'm only going to do it for one component. Oops, I forgot to fill that in. I'm only going to do it for this one component but you'll see that we can put then, instead of RT over V, we're going to put P sub T over N sub T. Now we're almost done, but notice that we have N for a component, number of moles of a component, divided by the total number of moles. We have another name for that. That is the mole fraction for that component, which we also represent as chi for that component. So we can have our final expression, which is the pressure for some component, 
is equal to chi, the mole fraction for that component, times the total pressure. That is a general expression we will use for different species as the shaded circle. We will use actual examples of gases for that, which we'll do in the next problem. So let's say we have a mixture at STP, standard temperature and pressure, it's of helium, neon, and argon, so three rare gases, three noble gases, and we're interested in the partial pressure of neon in kil kilopascals. All right, and we have this conversion written here, the atmospheres to kilopascals. We know that standard temperature and pressure means pressure in, at one atmosphere. All right, so let's use the equation we just deduced um, for neon. The pressure for the component neon equals to the mole fraction for neon times the total pressure. What is the mole fraction for neon? Well, we have mole percent. Mole fraction is just that number divided by 100. So the mole fraction is going to be 0 0.170. And the total pressure at STP is one atmosphere, which in kilopascals is given here. 101.325 kilopascals. And when we do the math for that, we come up with 17.2 kilopascals as the partial pressure for neon in this system. All right, it's time for you to try one. This problem here, the composition of air. Air contains nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and a little bit of some other stuff. And we are taking a sample of air, compressing it to three atmospheres. We want to know what's the partial pressure of oxygen. This is like if you're filling a gas cylinder to go um, climb Mount Everest or go scuba diving, you would need compressed air. We want to know what the partial pressure is. So stop the video and calculate and then turn it back on. All right, we use the same partial pressure expression, this time for oxygen. The partial pressure of O2 is the mole fraction of O2 times the total pressure. The mole fraction is the mass percent divided by 100, so 0.21. And the total pressure is three atmospheres. So when you do the math, you get 0.63 atmospheres. And that is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures.